Welcome back to another episode of Investing Explained. Here's today's question. I really, really like this question. And for people following the financial news out there, they probably can't help but notice that indexing has really been something that's been heavily debated recently. Indexing is in many ways changing the landscape of investing. And right now it's almost 20% of the global stock market that is indexed. And you've seen this popularity of indexes for a long time. And at least the way it looks like now and the forecast you can make, it is expected to continue. And so basically what you're asking about, Vas, is what's that going to mean for us? I definitely think you're right about the positive feedback loop. I think that indexing is a factor in what you see right now with the high valuations. But you could also say it has to do with QE. Or you might also say it has to do with general state of the economy. There are a lot of great narratives of why you see the stock valuations that you experience right now. But yes, I do agree that the ups and downs to experience in the market, they will probably be exaggerated to some extent. Now, in essence, I don't think it's different than what Warren Buffett's professor, Benjamin Graham, observed after the Great Recession. And I'm sure you can argue even before that, when stocks are expensive, investors flock to the stock market and they start selling when it goes down. And as you suggest, indexing probably makes this worse. The question is how much. But really back to your question, whether or not Buffett is doing a disservice to the retail investor. I don't think he is. And as you also mentioned, he's been saying 20 years, 30 years, even a longer period of time for holding indexes. And not necessarily talking about going into indexes right now, but more like a general approach to invest in the stock market. And I think that if investors then start selling anyway, I really can't see how Buffett can be blamed for people not following his advice. And the other thing I would like to add is, what is the alternative to the stock investor? Say that he doesn't invest in index and say that he wants to do individual stock picks instead. So it's important to keep in mind that even if you pick an individual stock, it is by definition a part of a market index. You might not buy the market index, but someone else is, and they will also be owning your stock. And I think you bring up a really good point about the psychology in the market. Because we usually know that people would sell at the wrong time. I do think most people will have a harder time selling an index, even though it might sound counterintuitive to your thesis. Because at least when you have an index and say that you're lost, 30%, then you will have lost 30% and everyone else has lost 30%. It might be harder to hold on to a stock that has dropped, called 40%, or even just 20% because you don't have that certainty of following the herd. Interesting question. I, you know, I have no idea what the next recession is going to look like. You know, I I really can't even comment on how deep I think it's going to go. I think any type of you know conclusion that I would draw would just be completely based on biases that I hold. I think it's going to be deep and one a, a fifty percent or a uh, negative fifty percent or bit. You know that's based on nothing. That's just based on you know my my feelings, which are which are worthless. I feel like the central banks have been pumping this thing up a lot, and I think that I buy into the Ray Dalio narrative that on the way up it's reinforcing it. And on the way down, it's also reinforcing with the way that credit contracts. So it's going to be really a function of how well the central bankers can prop this next credit cycle up after this starts to contract. You know, you could make the argument that it's going to be deep because they don't have the amount of interest rates to drop like they did during the last cycle. There's a lot of people making that argument and they think that that might be one of the reasons why it could go deep. But for me to be able to say with any type of absolute uh, certainty, I have no idea. I really don't know. With respect to your second question about Buffett, um, you know, telling people that the best way to invest is ETFs and that that might actually cause more harm than good, I don't know that I'd necessarily buy into that. I think that I think a person either has the temperament or they don't have the temperament. If they don't have the temperament. You know, I th- I think all Buffett's trying to do, if I had to guess with what he's trying to do, I think he's genuinely trying to help people. I think he's genuinely trying to help people get the best return that they can based on the amount of knowledge 
he expects the average investor to have. There's one thing that I think that he has learned, and that's that most people have no idea what they're doing. And based on that, he's he's telling people to invest in ETFs simply because the fees are low and you can get the market's return. Whether you have the the temperament to stay in the market when it starts to contract or you know as it's climbing or whatever, that's completely up to the individual and just having faith and continuing to do the dollar co- cost averaging in the S and P five hundred or whatever ETF they're trying to track. That's it. Preston and I will continue explaining investing, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button.